Hi, I'm Dr. Marty Schreiber, and I am the Chief Medical Officer for Home Modalities at DeVita. It's my pleasure today to be here with Dr. Mark Shapiro, who is a national PD consultant uh, for DeVita and directs several peritoneal dialysis programs within the San Diego area. Mark is a passionate believer in peritoneal dialysis and a true friend uh, of mine uh, since I started at DeVita several years ago. So, Mark, it's great having you here today. Uh, and I really would like to start off the discussion by talking a little bit about how nephrologists see peritoneal dialysis and really getting at who our patients that are eligible for peritoneal dialysis. And most nephrologists claim that there are 25 to 30 percent of their practice that are candidates for peritoneal dialysis. And do you think that um, this is a correct figure for most nephrologists? Uh, and how do you get nephrologists to have more confidence in peritoneal dialysis? Right. So thanks, Marty. Um, I think. I don't think that nephrologists lack confidence in the therapy of peritoneal dialysis, but I do think a lot of nephrologists lack experience taking care of a wide variety of different kinds of patients on peritoneal dialysis. Yeah, we know, we know the national surveys. When you ask nephrologists what they believe, they do. They believe 25 to 35% right. of patients should be on PD, but we know that the number is about a third of that in practicality. So, not a lack of confidence in the therapy, but maybe more a lack of confidence for certain kinds of patients getting into on that kind of therapy. And while we look at 25 or 35 percent, and in, in how that compares with what exists right now at 11 percent, what percentage do you believe is, is practical? Right. So to quote the data in Hong Kong, where at one point in 2006 they had 81 percent of their patients on peritoneal. We know that was partly due to policy structure, but the point, it does tell us what's possible. What's practical may be a little bit different. So what's possible is different than what's optimal. In my opinion, what's optimal is probably somewhere between 30 and 40 percent. And the number that I quote is that I believe that in my group we should be starting 40 percent of our new patients on peritoneal dialysis. I think that's an achievable number and a number we're striving for. Right. You know, it's fascinating. When I was at Cleveland Clinic, I used to talk about who's a candidate for peritoneal dialysis, and I would list all these patients. Uh, but I've gone really to thinking, who's not a candidate? Because I view there's so many more patients that could do peritoneal dialysis than are currently doing it. In your opinion, what are some absolute contraindications of peritoneal? Right. There aren't very many. There really aren't very many. You could ask the question, <laughs> what are the absolute contraindications to hemodialysis? They're actually not that different. Uh, but there are a few differences, right? Um, to do peritoneal, you have to have a functional peritoneal space. And there's a small percentage of patients who don't have a functional peritoneal space because of multiple operations or other things. I think the most common real clinical contraindication is active abdominal inflammatory processes, such as chronic pancreatitis or uh, inflammatory bowel disease where chronic abdominal pain, I would be really reluctant to put those patients on PD. You know, the other, the other commonly quoted example are patients with percutaneous gastrostomy tubes, okay? I would really, really hesitate, but even then, I've done it before, you know? So the absolute right. contraindications are really small. I think what you really want to talk about are the relative contraindications. So just because you can't do it doesn't mean you should. We have homeless people, they don't do very well in home dialysis. Right. We have people who are mentally ill or have cognitive disorders without support where they really can't at a fifth grade education level follow instructions and do what you ask them to do. People who can't do that or don't have the support to do that are not very good peritoneal dialysis candidates. So, you know, mentally ill, homeless, real severe cognitive problems without support I think those are the most common relative contraindications that we run into. All right. Thanks. It's really great information. What, what I would like to touch on, though, is the role of the surgeon in helping you assess the appropriateness of a patient, whether it be a patient that had prior abdominal surgery or a patient that has a hernia. Sure. And how do you see that, and how do you partner with the surgeon? Because they're critically important to the success of the therapy. Right. So I don't think that most nephrologists can tell 
whether the abdominal space is adequate to do PD or not, right? So I do know nephrologists who consider having had a previous abdominal operation to be a contraindication, and we, we don't view it that way at all. There are times when a series of abdominal operations may compromise the peritoneal membrane and the peritoneal cavity to a point where PD is impossible to do, but I don't know how I could tell that from a distance. And so typically, if we believe that a patient otherwise has clinically good reasons to do peritoneal, we'll refer the patient to the surgeon. The surgeon does a laparoscopic evaluation and sometimes we'll conclude that the, it's just a mess in there. Right. We can't do it. But more frequently, the surgeon will say either, you know what, it's not bad, or sure, there's some adhesions, but I can take those adhesions down surgically. You know, clean up the abdomen, so to speak. Mm -hmm. So in our experience, it's very, really uncommon that the ab abdomen becomes a contraindication to doing PD. Could I ask you about the elderly patient? I get you know, questions from physicians about can an elderly patient do peritoneal dialysis. How do you look at that population or how does your practice look at that population? I don't view them any different as a younger right. patient. Uh, you, again, you could ask the Especially same question. Especially as you get older, you yeah, know. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. You could ask the same question about a hemodialysis uh, right. patient. I mean, is this a good hemo? If you're 95, are you a good candidate for hemodialysis? Right. I, I don't view the two as being any different. Uh, there's a few things. You know, you have to be able to lift a bag and hang it on a pole. You've got some things like that you've got to consider. You know, there's things like that, but, but you can almost always get around those kinds of things. You know, right. we've got people in their 80s doing it themselves, by themselves, living alone by themselves. So I, I just, it's a case-by-case -case basis to suggest that elderly people can't do it, I think would be unfair to elderly people. Any closing thoughts on diabetics as well as polycystic kidney patients? Sure. Let, let's... Let's talk about polycystic patients because I think they're really interesting. We have more than 60% of our polycystic patients on PD. They do really, really well. They have relatively few, con relatively few comorbidities. The problem with PCKD is they have these big kidneys. They tend to get hernias, and hernias are an issue. You need to think about hernias as a nephrologist, and your surgeon has to think about hernias. Ideally, hernias get fixed at the time of PD catheter placement. Sometimes they get fixed before as a separate procedure. Sometimes patients will develop hernias after they start PD, but it's not hard to fix hernias. And I'll tell you something else, it's not hard to fix hernias and keep the patient on PD even after they've started. We could talk about that some other time. Okay. So we do it all the time. You know, diabetes, uh, 50, 60% of my PD patients are on diabetes. I don't consider it a problem. Their, their diabetic control really is no more difficult. You know, sometimes you have to increase the medicine a little bit. But when you think about the contribution of 1.5% dextrose or 2.5% dextrose to diabetic control, it's pretty insignificant. You know, another group that comes up a lot are the obese patients, right? Uh, I don't consider obesity to be a contraindication to peritoneal. You know, as some brilliant person once said, we don't dialyze fat, okay? The fact is that they're big people. I have people over 300 pounds on peritoneal. The only thing I would say about that is, a certain percentage of patients who do peritoneal dialysis will gain weight, and sometimes that's a problem for people, especially if they want to get a kidney transplant. So we have occasionally taken people off peritoneal when they gain weight and put them onto home hemodialysis or in-center hemo. But the idea that being heavy is a contraindication to PD, I think, is, a, is again, unfair to people who are heavy. Yeah, great information. I really would like to thank Mark Shapiro for sharing his thoughts today with us regarding the complex patients. Uh, because I think it's invaluable. And some patients that we traditionally may have thought couldn't do peritoneal dialysis are great candidates for peritoneal dialysis and should not be excluded from being able to do that modality at home. So I'd like to thank Mark for being with us here today and sharing such valuable information about this very important topic to your practice.